let's go ahead and create an Android project here using Android Studio. Now, one thing you will notice right away is that my Android Studio may look very different from the previous videos as well as from what you have on your machine. Now, what I did here was very simple. So I actually installed the material design theme for IntelliJ and Android Studio. Okay, so the way you do that is very simple. You go to Android Studio, go to Preferences. And what you need to do, what I usually do, I go to search here and I say again, say enter, and it brings you to the plugins inside here, inside of all these preferences, as you can see. So next, what you do, is you go to browse repositories, click on that, this comes up. And what you do, you then search for material theme as such. Okay. And you can see I have here my material theme UI and of course you should have a an install button here. I don't have that because I already have my material theme UI for Android Studio. Just follow the wizard. I just click on install so it will look something like this. You have this install button yeah, for our material theme and click on that and then follow the process. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Once you have installed the material theme UI, uh, you just go back here inside of our settings, preferences. You just type theme again, okay? And you will have here, this is where it says appearance, okay? So this is where you're going to change everything. So you will have something different. You click on here, so you will have the default or dark one. I will still use the dark one so that it has this appearance as we see here, okay? And of course, you have to say apply and then OK. I won't do that because I already have it all done. And of course, you can change the size of your text, right, of your code, font size, and you can uh, get a different font size uh, and change a lot of different things that you want. All right, just a side note there. OK, let me get out of here. All right, so let's go ahead and create our project. I'm going to say file, new, new project, such. And this one I'm going to call Material UI buttons. Okay, come build apps with Palo. That sounds great. Say next. And this is all good. I'm going to just go ahead and say, say next. The next thing I'm going to say, I'm going to just go ahead and say, click on the basic activity. Next. And finish. Okay, so we'll now create a new project for us. All right, and there we go. Right away, we have our new project, okay? Our new Android project here. The first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is I'm gonna go ahead and run this. I already have a few virtual machines, a few virtual devices running. So I'm gonna use the one that's running. If it's not running, you just pick one here for under the available virtual devices. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. And if you, in a few seconds, we should be able to see and there we go, it says hello, right? So this is our text view. Now there's a lot of things going on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and close a few things down here. All right, so we have our hello here, which is going to be our text view, as you can see. Okay, it's our text view, it's hello. Now let's go ahead and add a button. So there is a button at the top here and under our palettes, so you can go ahead and grab it and put, for instance, at the top. And because we hear what I'm gonna do, in fact, let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see, okay? Well, here I'm gonna go ahead and use our constraints layout and snap it to the bottom here. What this will do, will make sure that this button will always be at the top of our text view hello world there. So as we have our button, you notice that to the right here, we have this property panel which has an ID so we we can give IDs to our user com user interface component because this is the way in which we can actually invoke our user components in code and do things with them okay so in this case I'm just gonna call this button ID usually you have to make it more descriptive but in this case it just works so I enter and then we have that and you notice also we have many other properties such as style background and so many other things 
So the idea here is that I want to show you how to change properties in code of our user interface components here, such as the button and this hello world text text view. Let me change this ID also to ID of text view ID as such. And I'm going to say yes. I'm going to snap this there so we have more space. What we need to do next is go to our main activity. This is where our code lives. So we have a lot of code here, but I just want you to focus only on our button. So we're going to say private, say button, call this my button. Of course, we need to import the button library as such. So Alt Enter for Windows and Command Enter for Max. Okay, and I'm going to also do the same with our text view. Okay, I'm going to say my text view as such. So now that we have them, we can go inside of our on create here and we can go and instantiate a few things. So I'm going to go right after set content here. I'm going to go ahead and say, for instance, um, my button. Now I'm going to connect to the button. I'm going to say is equal to find view by ID. I'm going to press r.id. And I'm going to find button ID. Now, of course, we have issues here because we need to make sure that this find view by ID is actually getting a button view, right? Because just using the find view by ID, it returns a generic view. In this case, we want to, to return to be cast as a widget button or user component button, okay? All right, so now that we have our button here, we have a handle, meaning now we are able to get this whole button so that we can do things to our button. Okay, so we can do things like my button that set text. You see, there's a lot of properties that we can use. Okay, now to set text, we can set text color. Let's start with set text. Okay, we can use this one here. It's all the same thing. Okay, but the set text ID, we can actually pass an ID to where our text resides, which usually you want to put your text for your apps inside of our string file. Okay, that's all good. So here we can just gonna go ahead and pass a string here. I'm gonna just say, click me as such. Now, if we save this, you notice we are now using a property called set text, and we're passing the text we want to show inside of our button. So essentially, we, what we're doing here, if you look at our button, it says button, the text says button. We're changing this property here dynamically so that now when we run, it's going to say click me instead of my button. Okay, if we save this and give it a run. And go to our and see here now there's a difference right here says my but here says button and here says click me because we've changed um, the property of the text inside of our button very very nice I'm trying to get you to start thinking of all of these user components as we talked before they are all views they inherit from the parent class view which means all of the inter interactivity we can add to a simple view are also added can also be attached to our components here user interface components or widgets okay so the same thing we can do obviously with our if we go back here or my text okay so we can also go and instantiate my text i'm going to say my text view as such i'm going to say is equal it's going to be type of text view Find view r.id dot text view because that was the ID we used. And we can say my text dot set text again. You notice we have the same property we can use, method we can use to pass whatever text we want. We can say hey there. Save and run. We should be able to see now it says here, hey there. We said earlier that views allow us to draw things inside of them, but also allows us to attach event listeners. Well, that also means we can also say my button and say set on click listener, right? I'm gonna pass a click listener event here, on click listener as such, and we notice we have here on click override method. So now what we can do, we can say s out, 
and such. So system out per se for now. And I can say hello, I was clicked. Okay, so we've attached a click listener to our button. So if you save again, give it a quick run. Right, so now if we go ahead and say click and look at that system out, hello, I was clicked. Okay, and here's the beauty because we said all views, meaning even text views, could be attached to event listeners. Right, guess what? Yes, we can say my text can that set on click listener. Look at that, you can say new on click listener, and the same properties that we had. Right, is on click here. We can also um, have inside of our a text view. So uh, again, we go back to the idea that if any user interface is attached or inherits from a, a, a view, that means all of the view properties, things that the view does, these children can also do. That's the basic knowledge when we talk about object-oriented programming, right? So that means anything that we can put on screen, we can potentially actually make them clickable as well. Even though a text view is not a button, but guess what? We can make it a button per se. Okay. Here I can say, for instance, S out for system out, and I can say text view clicked as such. Okay. Go ahead and give it a run. should be able to click also on our hey there we can click here but hey there if we open here in our monitor you can see here it says text clicked ha huh. I accidentally added a register there <laughs> it was a mistake but it looks kind of nice okay so that is the um, overall idea I wanted to show you here that buttons or text views or edit text or anything that we put on screen because they're part of the view class because they inherit from view they can actually do all sort of things that views do perfect I'll see you in the next video